G'day. How are you? I'm just um, this DMX King E DMX4 Pro here. I've had it for a, um, a few weeks now. I've been meaning to crack the lid and have a look because um, I built my own Ethernet to uh, 4 Universe converter before, but it was a bit more uh, a bit more sort of involved than than this tiny little unit here. Everything's in one nice little container. It's, it's, it's only uh, half a rack unit wide, one rack unit high, so you can mount two of these next to each other in, in one rack unit, which is pretty awesome. Power over Ethernet as well, with an Ethercon style input, uh, and four universes, either inputs or um, outputs, mostly outputs, <laughs> obviously, but with some sex changes you can make these inputs. So uh, I just wanted to have a look on the hood and see what's in here. So. Yeah, okay. Well, being power over Ethernet, this module here is going to be our... Um, it's it's going to be off the shelf. It's not going to be made by DMX King, I don't think. These are probably a very standard module that you'd insert into a product like this. That'll drop the... Um, will not only deal with the power over Ethernet sense stuff, but also um, drop the voltage down from 48 volts down to 5 volts for the, the circuitry on the board here, so... Over here, this is going to be that. Uh, that's going to be our Ethernet pulse transformer. It's uh, going to have a transmit and receive transformer in there that connects to the Ethercon connector. It forms the physical side of the uh, Ethernet interface. Uh, I'm a bit surprised here to see a micro SD slot. Um, there's no mention in the manual or uh, anywhere that I know of any any functionality that uses this, but it's. Um, yeah, I'd be surprised to see that in there actually. I, I can only think it would be maybe used for. Well, it could be used for anything really. You could you could serve web pages out of this, uh, or or have uh, pre-programmed sequences. You know, run run. You know, it'd be quite handy to have a, a little player that has four universes and plays a pre-programmed sequence signaled from the um, Ethernet or or uh, even just from power on would be a pretty handy little sort of install device. Uh, you know what's in there? That's going to be the local supply rail voltage uh, regulation and smoothing. That's going to take the voltage output from this module here and make it suitable for pretty much the rest of the board, which I think is going to be sort of 3.3 volts sort of stuff. So well, I'll cruise along and have a bit of a look. Let's see if I can. Zoom in a bit without sort of bunging it up too much. So over here we've got some some light pipes. It's the SMD LEDs on the board here, just showing them, indicating uh, what, are we, what are we showing that, that there's data happening. That we've got a link, I suppose, um, and the status of A, B, C, and D. These are bicolor LEDs. I've seen them um, green or red, and I'm sure they do yellow as well. Uh, okay, so well, up here we've got a, a crystal oscillator. Let's see what we can. Uh, let's see what frequency we've got there. Uh, too much. Come on. Auto focus. I got to learn how to use this uh, crappy handy cam. Well, I can't really. I can see that. I said 25. 25 meg crystal. A. Uh, Texas Instruments by the looks TM4C129 that's going to be a microcontroller uh, I don't sort of see any flash around it so I'm going to say that's going to have the program in it, that's going to have memory in it it's going to have um, uh, some peripherals uh, probably UARTs actually for controlling the four, four universes down here and um, basically that uh, and it's going to have an Ethernet um, Media access controller layer at the Mac layer, so the physical layer is as some of it as well. Um, it's connected to this pulse transformer and that's that's talking through the um, Ethernet to the micro there. <coughs> Excuse me, and it'll be um, receiving uh, the ArtNet or ACN or or, or or receiving DMX from one of the channels and um, converting that to Ethernet and back. So it's really doing all of the work here. <laughs> uh, here we get a little connector, what's that? It's going to be 
sort of, uh, is it labelled? That's going to be in circuit serial programming so that this can be programmed in the factory or where it's made um, basically by coming along, connecting a plug onto there, program goes into it and also be used for sort of debugging stuff as well so um, uh, JTAG perhaps, not sure, it's it's not labelled so JTAG's a, a standard for, for this sort of deal and I'm sure a lot of TI products do JTAG so across here we've got four universes which is pretty cool. A universe is really, you know, I don't think it's really aptly named, it should be a galaxy because the universe is pretty big, you know, there's no sort of um, having, well, in parallel universes you could call these, but that's another story. Um, but basically there's there's four circuits here that are going to be exactly the same, so we'll, we'll just take a close look at one and the rest of it is going to be exactly the same, so Oh, nice sort of gold plated pins on the XLR here. That's nice. It's a new tied, new tied um, five pin XLR. Looks pretty good. Uh, some diode clamping here, so this is going to be sort of restricting the the, the input voltage as well. Um, that says PTC. So these are going to be um, polythermal cutouts, like resettable fuses, basically. Uh, polythermal, polythermal. Um, uh, it's not perfect polythermal cutout, but it's a uh, you know PTC. The basis of it is it's a fuse that's going to heat up an open circuit, and will uh, auto reset. So basically, you know, if if there's fault current coming through the XLR, it's going to open. It's not going to. Uh, it's going to. It's, it's basically protection for the circuitry to prevent it from getting fried by, you know, someone plugging a smoke machine remote or something into it, you know. Um, and then a couple of resistors here. What's that? Oh, look at that. That's a 75176B. That's our RS485 transistor. That is the uh, line interface. So basically the, the the signal comes in from the microcontroller, it's it's a low voltage signal and this is a, a bus transceiver. So this is what connects the light to all the other lights. This is the most important chip. And it's interesting, like the, the protection in here is great, but if that chip was to ever blow, you can't really sort of easily replace it here. You know, a, a um, eight pin dip version of this with a socket would have been great so you can sort of pop that chip off and replace it but the protection here is you know a lot more than what you see <laughs> in a few other products um, one beginning with E that I won't mention but uh, that's very nice you know that that's you're very unlikely to pop this chip with the the protection that you've been afforded here you know and further on there's 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 going to be more protection. This will be an isolated DC to DC power supply. It's great. Like it's really cool that there's four of them, like one per channel. I mean, you, you probably could have got driven two channels off this, but you know, it's just overhead. It's 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 um, over engineered. It's great. It's really well done. So this is going to be taking the voltage from our uh, power over Ethernet and converting it. Well, uh, it's sort of like there's small transformers in there. And there's an isolation bridge basically between this side of the pins and that side of the pins. You might be able to see it, but there's a thick track running through here. This will be a ground track, and it's it's running straight across underneath all of these chips. It's it's another sort of creating a bridge basically between any side that nasty shit could happen and um, the side that we want to protect, especially which is going to be the microcontroller here. So. This will be a, well, it's going to be a bi-directional um, isolated data interface, basically doing the same thing. There'll be um, little transmitters or or like a little opto setup, sort of opto couplers, basically you can think of this chip as, and it's going to be allowing data to go across this way and come back. And also, um, because this unit will both be input and output, it will be supporting a direction control to the SN75176 chip there, which is the DMX transceiver, to allow it to send or receive as well as having the two data channels. So 
um, basically that th this, this side of the top side there is is totally isolated from that side which is brilliant um, per like by four channels as well like I've seen a few devices which claim to have isolation but basically they just isolate one side of the connection but here we've got um, excellent isolation across all four univer galaxies I call them um, yeah so that's pretty much it that's I didn't really expect a lot more I'm really surprised about the SD connector um, I wonder what's going to go in there I wonder if it's usable right now I mean there's really no point in me putting a card in there because I wouldn't know what um, the firmware would be expecting if anything it might be used for for updating firmware at the factory somehow I mean these connectors are so cheap again I mean that's probably two cents to put on the board so why not nothing on the bottom completely unpopulated big copper areas for isolation catch any stray RF that's nice uh, yeah really well built I mean you know and, and the convenience of it sort of fitting in putting two of these next to each other into a um, one rack unit, it's great, I mean, what what I'm doing with it, I'll show you now, I'll just zoom out a bit, oh, I can't zoom out, I've got a, uh, a rack here in the bottom of it, oh, can I go down, oh, let's go and see if we can get this to go down, there's two DMX switches, uh, two, <laughs> two DMX splitters in there, there's an Ethernet uh, switch in there with which is PoE as well, so it powers the unit. Uh, it's just got four Ethcons on the, the side here. That um, well, th this has no PoE. It's kind of, it comes from the console or, or you know from an upstream switch, and these can power other nodes. Or uh, I've got a wireless um, PoE access point as well, so that's great. And, and, and yeah, and they're just two DMX splitters. And what I've got is. A, screws into the back of that splitter there. I opened up the splitter and checked there's nothing inside that I've screwed through. Like, no man's fault. There's pl plenty of clearance inside for me just to screw this straight back into the back of the splitter there. And on the back you can again you can see there's a um, four, uh, five way PoE switch up here. Uh, Ethercom ports up linked to the console. PoE are on these three. Um, there's See two DMX splitters. These universes run, uh, galaxies run straight to the front, and um, there's another two there that I uh, often plug into as well. So handy stuff. And this is the front of the rack here. It's just a, um, a. I got them kind of custom made in China. Not a lot custom about them, other than I got them made uh, for three pin specifically because. This went into a show that was running just three pin lights, everything was three pin, but I just got the two universes running out to the back of it. And um, so, just to wrap up, um, very happy with the E DMX4 Pro, it's worked flawlessly for me. Um, survived many a gig so far, and really interesting about that SD card slot. I wonder what we're going to see happen there. But um, all in all, very well designed. Very sturdy. You can see I've got it screwed to the back of the split here at the moment. As I mentioned earlier, it's no dramas because there's plenty of clearance inside the splitter. It's just a steel case. So such a small attachment. It fits in the back of this rack. No worries. Um, and really impressive uh, isolation too. I, I was, you know, that's what you expect from a very high-end product um, but a lot of the cheapest sort of companies that begin with E aren't as thorough as DMX King's been here with its um, isolation so very very good cool well anyway that's that one for now I just wanted to have a look myself and I thought bugger it while I'm here I'll I'll uh, film it and have a look so I've got this ancient um, JVC handy cam. I don't even know if uh, any of this footage is going to appear anywhere. So, yeah, just worth a look. Um, thanks for watching. Cheers.